Chemical Equilibrium What is chemical equilibrium? Chemical equilibrium is when a reaction and its reverse reaction occur at the same rate. In this example, we have N2O4 changing into NO2. That's the forward reaction. Equilibrium is when the reverse reaction is occurring at the same time. When these opposite reactions occur at the same rate, you're at equilibrium. As a system approaches equilibrium, both the forward and the reverse reactions are occurring. Notice we have N2O4, our reactant, Notice it's the blue line. Its rate is starting to decrease. NO2 is going in the reverse direction to form N2O4. Do you notice that orange line? Its rate is starting to increase. There comes a point where you reach equilibrium, when the rates are equal. At equilibrium, the forward and reverse reactions are proceeding at the same rate. Once equilibrium is achieved, the amount of each reactant and product remains constant. Take a look at this diagram. When do the rates become equal? The rates become equal when the concentration no longer changes. Do you see where equilibrium has been achieved? Notice that the concentration does not have to be equal. They just have to be constant. Concentration becomes constant, not equal. Equilibrium is dynamic, not static. What does that mean? That means something is happening, even though it may not be visible to us. At equilibrium, you have a forward reaction occurring and a reverse reaction occurring, and they're occurring at the same rate. But when equilibrium is established, no more changes are observable. Let's take a look at this example. A going to B in the forward direction, then B going to A in the reverse direction. As the reaction progresses, the concentration of A decreases to a constant. Now that's assuming that you begin with A. Now let's assume that in your reaction vessel, you had no B to begin with. Well, over time, the concentration of B is going to increase from zero to a constant. When the concentration of A and the concentration of B are constant, equilibrium is achieved. The concentration of A and the concentration of B do not have to be equal. They only have to be constant. Let's take a look at this example. A closed container with a liquid will eventually establish equilibrium. Evaporation and condensation in a closed container will achieve equilibrium. When does equilibrium take place? When the rate of liquid turning into gas, when the rate of evaporation is equal to the rate of gas changing into liquid or condensation. Equilibrium is when the rate of evaporation is equal to the rate of condensation. Take a look at flask A. In flask A, Everything seems to just be evaporating. That's showing that the water level or the liquid level is decreasing. But when equilibrium is established, there comes a point where the amount of substance evaporating is equal to the amount of substance condensing. That means the liquid level is going to remain constant. Saturated solutions are also in equilibrium. It's when the rate of dissolving is equal to the rate of crystallization. The solid at the bottom is in equilibrium with the dissolved particles. In the forward direction, you have dissociation. Isn't that the dissolving of an ionic substance? 
But then the reverse reaction would be the crystallization of those ions to reform the solid. When dissolving and recrystallizing is at equilibrium, that means their rates are the same. And really, there's going to be no net change in the concentration or other observable properties once equilibrium is established. It's important to note that equilibrium can be reached from either direction. So if you look at the first diagram on the left, notice you begin with a whole bunch of hydrogen, no ammonia, and a little bit of nitrogen. When you reach equilibrium, the concentrations become constant. Now look at the second diagram. In that one, you begin with no hydrogen, no nitrogen, and only ammonia. But over time, that will also establish equilibrium. It does not matter whether we start with nitrogen or hydrogen, or whether we start with ammonia. We will have the same proportions of all three substances at equilibrium. In this example, you start with all NO2 and you reach equilibrium. In the next example, you start with all N2O4, and eventually you reach equilibrium. In the third diagram, you start with a mixture of NO2 and N2O4. Eventually, you also reach equilibrium. What's important to note is that the relative concentrations of the product and reactant has to be the same in all three of these examples. The concentrations don't have to be identical, but the ratio between the concentrations of product and reactant have to be the same. Writing equilibrium equations. In a system at equilibrium, both the forward and reverse reactions are occurring simultaneously. We write the chemical equation with a double arrow as shown below. We're not going to write two separate equations. We're just going to write a double arrow to show that this system is an equilibrium reaction. What is the equilibrium constant? Another name for equilibrium constant is mass action expression. It's going to tell you the ratio of products to reactants. So if we look at this equation, little a, big A, plus little b, big B, in equilibrium with little c, big C, plus little d, big D, those lowercase letters represent coefficients. In order to determine the equilibrium constant or the mass action expression, you take the concentration of products over the concentration of reactants. Now see how C and D are both products? That means we're going to take the concentration of C raised to the coefficient, small c, times the concentration of big D raised to the little d power, that coefficient, over the concentration of A raised to the little a coefficient times the concentration of B raised to the little b coefficient. The equilibrium constant is found by measuring the concentrations of products and dividing it by the concentration of reactants according to this formula. K is called the equilibrium constant. We have products over reactants, and it's important to note the equilibrium constant is for a specific temperature. There is only one thing that will change the equilibrium constant, and that's temperature. Let's take this example. In the forward reaction, we have N2O4 gas going to NO2 gas. And in the reverse reaction, we have N2O4 gas being formed by the 2NO2 gas. Notice the forward reaction and the reverse reaction. All we're going to do is put the double arrows. That means that this reaction can establish equilibrium. The rate of the forward reaction can equal the rate of the reverse reaction. 
So how do we find the equilibrium constant? We take the concentration of products divided by the concentration of reactants. So what are my products? My products are always going to be on the right side of the arrow, even though sometimes in the reverse reaction you might call it a reactant. No, we're just going to be consistent and say reactants are on the left side of the arrow, products are on the right side of the arrow, whether we're talking about the forward or reverse. So to find the equilibrium constant, we take the concentration of NO2, notice the coefficient in front of the NO2, so we're now going to take that to the second power. We're then going to divide it by the concentration of N2O4, our reactants. Let's do this example. How would we write the equilibrium constant for this equation? Products over reactants, and then the coefficients become exponents. Let's look at another example. The equilibrium constant, products over reactants, and don't forget your exponents. Excellent! Let's go on. Concentration is measured in molarity. In the gaseous phase, when we're talking about gases, concentration can either be expressed in molarity or in atmospheres. Pure solids Pure liquids and solvents are not included. So when we write the equilibrium expression, we're never going to include solids or liquids. We just ignore them. They actually are equal to 1. So we just ignore them. The equilibrium constant has no units. So once you plug everything in and you come up with a number, there are no units. And lastly, in quoting a value for the equilibrium constant, you must specify the balanced equation, so make sure your equation is balanced, and you have to tell me the temperature. Remember, there's only one thing that will change an equilibrium constant, and that's the temperature. Solids and liquids are never included in equilibrium expressions. So consider what the equilibrium expression would be for this reaction. We're going to totally ignore the sulfur because sulfur is a solid. So in this example, look at what we're going to ignore. We're not going to include the water, are we? The equilibrium constant, K, is the ratio of products to reactants. Therefore, the larger the K, the more products are present at equilibrium. The greater the concentration of products, the larger the K. The larger the numerator, the larger the value of K. Conversely, the smaller the equilibrium constant, the more reactants are present at equilibrium. That means the reactants are going to be greater than the products. If K is greater than 1, then products dominate at equilibrium and the equilibrium lies to the right. Notice when I drew these double arrows, I put the bigger arrow in the forward direction. This is showing that in this example, the formation of products is favored. If K is less than 1, then reactants dominate at equilibrium and the equilibrium lies to the left. Notice in this example, the larger arrow is pointing in the reverse direction. That means reactants are favored, and this equilibrium is lying to the left. As I go over this PowerPoint with you, I'm hoping that you will begin to understand the vocabulary that is important for this unit on equilibrium.